May June 2023. Paper 4, variant 2. Question 1. A. Group 2 carbonates decompose when heated to form metal oxide and CO2. Okay, part 1. Suggest a mechanism for the decomposition of carbonate ion. So you need to add two arrows inside this figure 1.1. .1. Okay, so the first arrow is from the lone pair and point to the CO bond. So this one is showing that it will form double bonds later. And another bond need to break. So you need to draw another arrow from the C, another CO bond here, from this CO bond, and point to this oxygen or this oxide. So means this oxygen going to gain the pair of electrons and form the O2 negative dioxide. So means this part later will become CO2 and this will form O2 negative. Part 2. Describe the variation in the thermal stability of group 2 carbonate. Explain your answer. Okay, describe. So we know that when down the group, thermal stability increases means it's hard to decompose. It needs more energy to break the bonds. Okay, so because the ionic size the ionic size become larger, the polarizing power of this cation is getting lesser. So first you need to uh, mention or describe the thermal stability. So it increases down the group. Why? Because the charge density of the group 2 cation decreases. So when the charge density means uh, size is getting larger but same charge. So the charge density is lesser or decreases. Therefore, polarizing power is getting weaker. So the distortion of the anion means the uh, carbonate is getting lesser. So the CO bond is uh, less weakening. Okay, part B1. Define a uh, latest energy. Okay, it's very, very easy. Uh, energy released when one mole of ionic compound is formed from its gaseous ion under standard condition. Okay, so this is standard definition. Okay, part two. The latest energy of group two carbonate become less exothermic down the group. Okay, it just because of the cation size become larger. Okay, so the attractions become weaker later. So release lesser energy. And of course, the latest energies of group 2 oxide also become less exothermic. Same reason, because the uh, cation is getting larger. Less energy release. So means both latest energy for this uh, carbonate and this oxide become less exo. But the latest energy of this carbonate and oxide, they change by different amount. Different amount being released. He okay, suggests how the standard enthalpy change of the decomposition reactions for group 2 carbonate changes down the group. Uh, so now it's want to ask the standard enthalpy change of decomposition of group 2 carbonate. Uh, before we uh, continue this part, uh, so I uh, will show you this, uh, this very simple head cycle, then you can understand better. Okay, so first we start with the decomposition of the metal, group 2 uh, metal carbonate, this one. The uh, metal carbonate decomposed to form metal oxide and the CO2. So this is what we want to get. And we need to link the latest energy for both carbonate and the oxide. Okay, so then we try to put the uh, group 2 gases ion and the carbonate ion. So when these two 
combine, then it will form the carbonate. Yeah. So this is the latest energies of the group two carbonate. So the energies that released. And at the same time, this carbonate also can undergo decomposition to form the CO2 and the oxide, like uh, what we discussed in part uh, part A just now. Okay, so and of course, once it's formed the oxide, and this oxide will try to combine with the metal cation, group 2 cation, to form the metal oxide. So means in order for this uh, uh, group 2 ions and carbonate ion to form the metal oxide and CO2, it needs these two enthalpy. The latest energy of the uh, metal oxide and the enthalpy of the composition of carbonate. Okay, so we try to uh, link all this together. So therefore we know that. Okay, so we try to add this and this. So it's equal to this one, this and uh, So we get this relation. So the latest energy of the metal carbonate plus the enthalpies of the composition of metal carbonate is equal to the latest energies of magnesium oxide plus the enthalpies of the composition of carbonate. Okay, so we rearrange. We want to get the decomposition of metal carbonate, isn't it? Okay, so therefore it's equal to what? It's equal to the latest energy of the metal oxide minus latest energies of metal carbonate plus the enthalpies of decomposition of carbonate. Uh, this one is actually not really that uh, important to compare. So the one that affect the decomposition of metal carbonate is actually these two. The latest energies of the metal oxide and the latest energies of metal carbonate. Okay, so we know that uh, from the statement they change by different amount. Okay, because the size of the anion they are different. The carbonate is much larger than the oxide. That's why it has a greater contribution compared to the oxide. I mean greater contribution in latest energy. That's why when the size of the metal ion is uh, changed, it won't really affect the latest energy much because uh, the major part is contributed by the carbonate. Means when down the group, the latest energies of this uh, metal carbonate is actually decreased lesser. Not decreased as much as the metal oxide. Because oxide is small, so any change in the metal, uh, this uh, uh, group 2 metal uh, cation, it will affect the latest energy much. That's why we know that the latest energies of metal oxide, it decreased more compared to the latest energies of the metal carbonate. So at the end, what's happened? So the enthalpies of the composition for the metal carbonate, therefore will become more endo more and more positive because of this these different amounts so decrease lesser for this uh, metal carbonate and decrease more for these latest energies of metal oxide so end up with this one become more and okay uh, that that's the whole things about the the question right so let's get back to this then you can understand better Okay, so first you need to uh, explain what are the trend. Okay, the enthalpy change of decomposition for group two carbonate become more positive, as I told you just now, become more positive. Why? It because the ionic okay, radii of the oxide is smaller than carbonate. It's just because of this. Oxide is much smaller than the carbonate. So that's why carbonate, if you has a greater contribution on latest energy, so any change in the this uh, size of uh, uh, group two cation, it won't really affect the latest energy much. Okay, so therefore at the end we know that the latest energies of oxide become less exo faster means uh, it's released more energy. Become less exo faster. 
Okay, uh, that, that, that's how you understand and answer this part. Okay, part C. Uh, this one is just a normal titration. Uh, it's a reaction between the potassium sulfite and the uh, uh, KMnO4. Okay, so first we start with this 250 solution of the uh, potassium sulfite. Uh, is 3.4 gram in 250 cm3. Then we take 10% uh, or the uh, 25 cm cube from this solution for titration. So after titration, we know that 22.4 cm cube of 0 0.025 mole per dm cube uh, KMnO4 needed. Okay, so first part, give the ionic equations for this reaction. So we need to know the mole ratio between them. Uh, okay, so first we need to make sure the electrons number they are equal. So the first equation need to times five. Second equation need to times two. Make sure electrons number they are ten. So after that, okay, just uh, eliminate the electrons and sum up the species left to left, right to right, right. So at the end you get this equation. So we know that it will be 5 to 2 mole ratio between the sulfide and the uh, uh, KMnO4. Right. Okay, calculate the percentage of purities of the samples of the potassium sulfide. Okay, first we need to calculate uh, the moles of the uh, permanganate ion. Okay, so MV over 1000, so we get this mole. Okay, then from the mole ratio, we know that the sulfide is 5 and the uh, permanganate ion is 2. So we use the larger ratio, means 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 times the uh, uh, mole of the permanganate ion. So we get this mole. But this mole is in two, uh, 25 cm cube only. Uh, in 250 means we have to times 10. Right? So uh, the Total mole in 250 is this, 1.4 times 10 power negative 2. Okay, therefore, we use this mole for the mass calculation times the molar mass, we get 2.2162 gram. Okay, so we use the gram that obtained over the mass that given in the question, times 100, we get 65.2. So the purity is this. Yeah? Okay, so part D, potassium sulfide, Oh, so protein disulfide, the K2S2O5 is another food additive. Okay, and now we have the disulfide ion, okay, as shown figure in figure 1.2. Deduce the geometry of the sulfur alpha at the means this one. So we know that uh, this sulfur is has four electron crowd, and therefore we know that it must be tetrahedral. Okay, that's all for this question. Thank you.